and I'm an American, so freedom is delicious. Uh, <laughs> freedom is delicious. Things? It's a it's a raspberry tea, basically. Well, I got tangerine lemongrass seltzer water. Mm. Uh, you know what I was going to do today and I forgot? I was, I was going to go to GNC and get some of that uh, rock energy drink stuff. Oh, they sell it? It just came they out. It. Yeah, GNC and Vitamin Shop just announced, too. I kind of wanted to try it. I know you, they sell it on Amazon, but they only sell it single flavor by the case. Oh, Jesus. No, I don't want a case of it. Yeah, I was like, well, I don't know if I like it. Right. <laughs> I want, of them. I want a can of it. I want a can of each of them. Then I know which case to buy on Amazon. Guess I'll be shopping at Vitamin Shoppy. Yeah, <laughs> Vitamin Shoppy. You guys ever seen that movie Renaissance Man? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Every time someone says Shoppy, I think of that movie. You guys remember that scene? No. So they're. <laughs> I don't know why, but this this scene always stuck in my head. Um, DeVito makes all the guys come up and read something in front of the class. It's like a literature class or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, and one of them is reading an Archie comic. And he's reading it, and he's, like, real bad. And then he's all like, and he goes, and, hey, Mr. whatever DeVito's name was in, it's like, maybe you could help me with this. They say, come on, Archie, let's all go to the mall shoppy the hell's a mall shoppy <laughs> <laughs> I was like ah, that's a good scene cause I, I at the time I had no idea what a mall shoppy was do you now know what a mall shoppy is movie. listen Cody I don't want you asking questions you oh. don't want the answer to you. God oh, damn okay. it. <laughs> sorry. sorry I thought we were segueing into something nope apparently not my bad um, speaking of shopping comes naturally we are yo mike i am cody welcome to this week's episode everybody guess what mike did you watch it i did oh thank christ okay i was like wait a minute i forgot to ask before we started recording so this will be real weird again I actually watched it last night after the sun's game so. oh nice well we are talking about godzilla versus kong of course um, out in a theater near you, if you're near a theater that's open, or on the screen, HBO Max. If you're in the United States, I should preface that because uh, that is not the same case outside the United States, apparently. I didn't know that until this morning. Because I have a friend who's overseas right now, and he's like, hey, how's that Godzilla? I was like, why don't you just watch it? He's like, I can't. <laughs> not um, out yet. He's like, yeah, we don't have it here yet. I was like, like, well, it sucks to be in that country. Yeah. What country is that? He's in England right now. Oh, it sucks to be in England. Yeah. They're still in lockdown, lockdown too, aren't they? Yeah, he's outside of London, and I can't remember the town he's in. Oh. He's in a shire or a, you know. Yeah, new, one of those. One of those things. An old, an old something or other, yeah. you know, old York or something. Yeah, exactly. He lives on a cobblestone street. Yeah. He has a cobblestone street uh, behind his house, or the house he's staying in. Lucky bastard. Yeah. I want a cobblestone street. No, you don't, because yeah, but... the, the fence doesn't close right, and when it rains, which there's a lot, uh, it just washes mud into his uh, backyard. That's called romance, Cody. They have a lot of it over there. Yeah. Romance. What the fuck would you know about that? I don't. Oh, okay. What the fuck you know about <laughs> That's why I need a cobblestone road. Oh, gotcha. Okay, my bad. Yeah, to get you some of that cobblestone road. All that road land. I like how he's doing the Italian hand. Like, itty bitty mouse. You have to say it like there's an itty bitty... Oh, I'm sorry. Mike, I brought it up. I'm sorry. That's how you romance. I'm sorry, Mike. Don't hate me. I brought that up. Yeah, don't bring up undateable. He you gets dick. very mad. Gets very mad. Um. So, so what do we think? What? What? Who wants to go first? Cody, you go first. Joe Jack, wants to go, go first? first? No, Cody. <laughs> okay. You um, go first. Stop being a bitch. Do you yeah. stop being a bitch, bitch? Sorry. That was mean. Um, I don't have a drink. You guys were talking about drinks you have, and I'm like, I don't have a drink. I have I have this. That's not, <laughs> but I can't drink that, so. Um, and, no, anyways. Uh, so I, I actually love this movie. Uh, it was... I, we Joe and I were talking about this last night. Uh, 
the ridiculousness of sci-fi ridiculousness, not like just ridiculousness, but sci-fi ridiculousness, like it, I mean, obviously giant lizard uh, fighting giant, uh, uh, you know, radiation eating monsters uh, from the first Godzilla movie, obviously pretty ridiculous because it's giant monsters, you know what I mean? But realistic. Yeah. Um, Kong, giant monkey fighting army guys, blah, 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 right? Godzilla versus Kong or uh, King of Monsters. You have like the giant fucking plane thing they have, and like all these, you know, whatever, right? There's nothing crazy. But then this movie, you have, hey, you know what? We have gravity-defying helicopters, or the, the what do they call them? The heaves. Yeah. Hollow I Earth that was stood, stood for, but yeah, I can't remember what they're called either. It's a Hollow Earth something or other vehicle. Yeah, something like that. Um, and it's just like, just mostly ridiculous like thing ever. And it's just like, okay, uh, like let's let's just ramp up the ridiculous even more. So you know what I mean? Like we're gonna introduce a giant metal version of Godzilla that's controlled via the the skull of an alien three headed dragon. So fuck it, let's just go full bore and just lean into it. You know what I mean? But I I loved it. I I thought that they, and again, Joe and I were talking about this last night. I love the fact that they really went hard on the pseudoscience, but didn't try to like explain it so they didn't sound smart. They're just like, hey, yeah, Hollow Earth, these things defy gravity. Giant ape lives there. Let's go fight. You know what I mean? Like they didn't want to. Like, and the whole thing, it was just like, it was simple, but also like it sounded smart. But also it was ridiculous, and I loved it. I loved the action. I loved uh, the fight scenes were just, oh, my God. Like, you like, you have to go see it in theater if you can uh, because it's just, especially Cinema 1, because holy shit, dude, that place is just rumbling. Yeah. It's just going mad crazy, dude. Like, that – spoilers, by the way, if you guys don't know, we're going to spoil the shit out of this, uh, or at least I will. Uh, when Godzilla – First shows up at the at the boats, the boats, the ships, uh, with the, and Kong's like big fleet he's on. Uh, at first you're like, oh, he like, you have to know he's coming, right? So then he shows mm-hmm. up, and I was like, well, you you guys, the technology sucks balls because that one place knew he was there right away. Then you realize he's so far away that there's like just shooting like like Sam's at him, like surface air missiles, like just like fuck it, let's go, let's just shoot him. And they're going far. And I was like, oh, he's real far away. And then I was like, y'all should probably unhook the monkey. Cause, Dude, uh, I was so mad. I was like, fucking pull the lever, man. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, why are you fucking with this? <laughs> that would have been the first thing I did. Like, who's coming? Oh, here we go. Monkey's loose. Let's, let's, get, at, let's get at it. You know what I mean? Let's like not let. And then he just starts ripping through boats. And he starts fucking like hitting planes out of the sky with his tail. And then he just comes up to the boat, and I was like, "Uh oh, we in trouble." Boat flips over. I was like, "Well, you should have pulled that monkey release button a little fucking sooner, because y'all gonna die." But that was that was it. Uh, yeah, I just I mean, it was so much fun. I want to see it again uh, in theaters too. I want to see it again in theaters. Uh, the crowd was. Not so terrible. Uh, the clapping part uh, made no sense to me still because, uh, like, you're <laughs> clapping clap for a bunch of CG monsters that aren't mm-hmm. real people, and so they're not going to be hidden in the crowd. Um, so you're not going to be like, oh, thank you. <laughs> we enjoyed that a lot. Um, but it was, I mean, it was it was phenomenal, and I, uh, I, I loved so much of it, so so much of it. I mean, actually, I loved all of it. It was just, it was just bonkers. And the pacing of the movie is just fantastic because, like, as soon as you hit a lull, someone blows something up or a giant monster of some sort comes out of nowhere and eats somebody. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's just every, like, lull is just someone dies or a boat blows okay. up. As it should be. As it should be. That clapping caught me off guard. Like, it's been such a long time since I've been in a theater and, like, people have actually clapped at a, at a certain scene. 
like the the sound was just loud enough that I could barely hear it, and I was like, "What the hell is that weird, like almost a fizzing noise?" And then I realized it's people clapping. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's a thing people do. I forgot about that. Oh yeah, theater. people, public. They're clapping at a movie. Why? Because it was uh, what scene was it? It was when they when both Kong and and Godzilla took out. Uh, Mecha Godzilla, right? Yeah, right when. Yeah. So right when uh, Godzilla, like, obviously Godzilla, hits him so hard that Mecha Godzilla's like you know rocking robots, fucking mm-hmm. heads bouncing around, and then, uh, he like Kong goes to fucking town on that fucking skate with that scale axe and starts chopping off limbs like he's gonna fucking set him for a roast, and then Godzilla hits him again and, and with the blast and then fucking takes his head off and then rips it out. And you see, like, the robot spinal column just fucking hanging. And he's like, I was like, and was like, I was like, what the fuck is that? Oh, people need to, Y'all need to calm down. Why are you in my theater? This took me out of the movie. Yeah, you some bitches. I was totally invested. Uh, This movie was great. This movie was uh, the type of movie. Real quick, I'm so happy you said that because. There's part of me after this movie, I was all like, Joe's going to bitch about this movie. I was like, Joe's not going to like this movie because of the pseudoscience in it. But I also realized that, like, the fact that they were just like, science. Like, you know what I mean? They didn't try to realistic it up or anything. But yeah. I was worried that you are going to get mad at it. And I was gonna no. Get mad at it. <laughs> the only thing that I found, uh, I'll get to it in a second. I only found, like, one thing that was a little, not bothersome, but it was just a little weird. Uh, but we'll get to that in a second here. No, uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. This is the type of movie, uh, especially with the pseudoscience, like they just, they, like Cody said, they just went, we're not even trying to explain stuff here. We're just going to be like, there's a hollow earth. We have an entrance to it. We know how to get there. We just can't. Uh, we're going to have to invent some sort of anti-gravity fucking ship, Blade Runner ship in order to get there. You know, oh, we have one. Like it was the type, it's the type of movie you just, turn your brain off and just go ha ha monkey, <laughs> monkey lizard fight each other type of thing uh so it, it's a great movie in that uh the the people stories didn't really get in the way of the actual uh animal fighting stories they were more of just like a how do we get from point a to point b ah eh, we're gonna move uh kong you know because he can't survive on Skull Island anymore. And so we know about uh, the Hollow Earth theory now. Suddenly is a real thing. So we're going to move him there. And that sets up the first fight, which was glorious to see, like, in broad daylight without, like, some sort of storm happening or something like that that would kind of ob- ob- obscure the, uh, well, think- the fight. Yeah, so it was really cool to see that, especially on a fucking battleship with like such a small area for them to fight on. And then when uh, Godzilla's finally uh, like, you think he's going away uh, for a second there, and Kong's like, "No, man," he, and he just jumps onto that little battleship and then jumps onto that aircraft carrier. Yeah. Fucking awesome to watch. So much devastation. Uh, yeah, so it's such a fun, such a fun movie to to watch. Uh, the the pseudoscience and the whole conspiracy theory podcast and stuff like that was was just a, another way to get from the from one thing to the next thing. Uh, so it wasn't bothersome at all. Uh, the only, uh, like I said, it's not really a gripe. It's just a weird thing. It seemed like any time they were like, "But uh, here's what we're gonna do when when we do inter- introduce like some sort of pseudoscience stuff." neon fucking lights man we're just gonna put neon lights all over everything those fucking HEVA whatever the things were wherever they were fucking just they, they literally just took a Blade Runner car and just <clears throat> schumachered that shit up just like neon lights we're just gonna make this thing so super when they, scientific when they took off through the tunnel <coughs> excuse me and you would see like the trail that they were leaving uh huh like for a second, I was all like, "Is that like a like? Can they t- touch that?" Like I was like, I was confused for a second. right? I was all like, like, "Is that deadly on the outside?" That? Yeah, does yeah. the one behind it have to avoid it? I was, I was like, "Is that are they, is that going to cause a trouble?" I don't know. It was it looked weird. Like I was like, "That's not what I was expecting this thing to do." <laughs> yeah. Even Hong Kong, it, yeah, Hong Kong is where they ended up. Itself was just like I don't know how people sleep at night. 
there are so many fucking neon lights all over every goddamn building there. How Blackout the curtains sleep? in those little uh, sleep binder thingies. Were those little sleep binder things? Mm. Jesus Christ. Every building had some sort of neon light going for it, which was really cool because it did light up that scene, uh, which was a, a nighttime scene. So it helped with all the lighting there. Uh I absolutely love the way this movie was shot and these types of movies work so well when they're shot from more of a perspective of somebody on the ground or somebody in a lower building as you're like looking up at these ginormous things and they got such a they they move like you would think a large object would move which is very slow and very heavy and so every punch every jump every move was uh was sold by just how slow they were moving but how powerful you knew that that was uh it's a very it's like comparing uh uh pacific rim one versus pacific rim two in those aspects where one was shot more like like this is here where everything feels like it has a weight to it and everything feels uh, like it has a size to it, whereas two didn't feel much like that. It felt like more of an action movie where you're just watching Power Rangers fight, you know, people in rubber suits type things. Anyway, um, there was one more thing I was going to say. Mm. Oh, I bet I can tell you what what scene was Mike's favorite scene. I can too. Yeah. Ready, Joe? Re- ready on three. One, two, three. Monkey rigs. Yep, monkey rigs. We both had that independent thought because I was sitting six feet away from him, from them. When we got in the car, he brought it up, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I was thinking the exact same thing. That's gonna be Mike's favorite scene. I'm, where, I'm so where happy Kong you guys rigs himself. Rig. Yes, because I Jen ended up watching it with me. <gasps> really? Nice. Yeah, she wasn't going to. I was like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start this. We're gonna hang out, and then she's gonna watch her gay shows. But she got, <laughs> she got emotionally invested with the monkey. Uh, yeah, with the the giant monkey. She was like really upset. She was like, he just wants to go home. Take him home and <laughs> deal with Godzilla yourself. Like she was very upset. But yeah, when uh, when Kong fucking slammed his shoulder, and <laughs> I was all like, holy shit, he just rigs himself. And I slapped Jen. I was like, he rigs himself. <laughs> I was so happy. <laughs> oh, Knew it. Hilarious. It was so good. Yeah, man. That was, that was up there for sure. Um, there was three yeah, scenes I, I saw that I knew Mike would love and or ejaculate at. Mm. <laughs> Monkey rigs, number one. Uh, Godzilla, or I mean uh, uh, King Kong when he's on the building holding the crane. Right before he does the jump attack, and the one where he's eating the brains out of the head of the monster in, in the in the uh, Hollow Earth. That was so gross. That made me happy that he did that. I yeah. was like, yeah, get some monkey fuel. <laughs> you need some calories. You haven't eaten much. Eat that alien monster brain thing. How right? gross was the fish um, scene? The bit where he's just mount- munching down on all that seafood that they had in front yeah. of him. Oh, uh, yeah. He looked happy though too. For yeah. A second. Just, it, but, but you notice his teeth were all bloody? Food. Yeah. 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 All right, so good. Great. Yeah, go ahead, Mike. Sorry. Um, yeah, I like this movie a lot, too. It, it's honestly not – it's weird. It's it's exactly what I expected, and then also in other ways, like, not what I expected at all. I didn't think they were going to go balls deep on this fucking science thing. You know what I mean? I didn't think they were going to – what's really weird, it's like they – when they wrote this, it's like they – we're watching Pacific Rim every day. Mm-hmm. It's like, okay, we're going to write for eight hours. And then tomorrow morning, we're going to watch Pacific Rim and write for eight <laughs> hours. And then tomorrow after that, we're going to watch Pacific Rim and write for eight hours. Cause like, I was just like the whole time I was like, Oh, this, this is like, they just, they did all the Pacific Rim stuff, which is, mm-hmm. and it's, it's, I don't even, I, I don't want to make it sound like they're stealing. They're not, it's very general ideals, but it's like, yeah, and then I like how they explain, like, there's a theory that all the Titans come from the same area. There's this, and then I was like, that's the fucking, the, the what is it, the Hollow the Earth. Rift? Hollow, oh, yeah, the Rift, yeah. Hollow Earth, yeah. Yeah, from, from Pacific Rim. The, the Rift, yeah, 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 the Rift. I was like, okay, that's their version of the Rift. I was like, cool, 
we're gonna go in there and i was like are we gonna go into another world when that happens are we gonna be in the core of the earth like i was kind of confused but when kong went down there and you could tell it was it was his home you know what i mean i was like oh there's a gorilla statue and everything like oh this is where his people are from right and he's fucking sat on his throne i was like god damn it that's why they call him king kong king kong right. never had a goddamn throne before <laughs> and i don't understand why until like it had to happen now i was like jesus christ he should have had a throne the whole fucking time his name is king kong anyway um it was one of those things that didn't click with me until I saw it. I was like, yeah, that's right. He's supposed to be a king. Right, it makes sense now. He should have a throw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah uh, I didn't expect him to do all that shit, uh, which was super dope. And also, I didn't expect, because in, in the first two Godzilla movies, or more in the second one there, and it's been a while since I've seen it, so I might be off on the details, but they're they're hinting at that frequency that was pissing off the, the, the other monsters. Yeah. Yeah. I was like... Oh, that's why Godzilla's attacking people. Like, in my head, I was like, that fucking right. asshole that took the head in the second one. Mecking things, yeah. Is, yeah, is, is pissing off Godzilla. And he made a Mecha Ghidorah. And he's he's waiting for everyone to be like, oh, and so he could rule. You know what I mean? And then when that wasn't it, I was like, oh, okay, well. I guess <laughs> I this like, makes sense, too. Yeah. But then it was like, oh, Godzilla comes and fights the threats. Yeah makes sense now there was a threat and no one knew about it but it was every time that asshole was testing it that's when he would shoot out and try to fix some stuff so i thought that was cool and i like how the mecha godzilla looked it looked good but it also looked uh man-made very one point yeah, of yes very like you know yeah like it wasn't it's too flashy it, you know, it, it was in my very, head like i was thinking that it would if they would ever eventually do this, it would look kind of like how the old Mecha Godzilla looked to Godzilla. Like it almost looked like a one to one thing, except with the some electronics on him and painted metal. So that it would essentially look like him. But this kind of looked more like a skeleton of him. Yeah, like an endoskeleton of him only. Yeah. You know, yeah. like they didn't finish it almost. Yeah. But then you're like thinking like, well technically that's what that's all you need. You don't need anything else. Right. Else. And he's got fucking guns and shit. Right? <laughs> guns and missiles and fucking laser breath and the laser uh, tail so that good. spins. Yeah. That's pretty dope. Um Yeah, man. And and the uh, the action scenes, like I again I like the the first one on the on the ships was cool because you, you mentioned in broad daylight, but then also there was some underwater stuff too. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, okay, we're not getting the full like they're teasing us with the full one on one big long fight scene, but it's clear that Kong's at a disadvantage. One, because he was tied up for the first attack. Yep. And then he can't fucking breathe underwater, and Godzilla's being a big old dick bag and taking him underwater. Right. <laughs> and then I was like, and and then when they put him on the ship and they cut all the power to the ship and everything like that, we're like, we're gonna play dead, and and I was all like. Hey, Kong better fucking play dead. <laughs> right, Kong, he better get along with Kong, it. Kong, uh... he was just like, he, they did so good with giving Kong facial expressions. Yes. Where it was like, yeah, you don't need, like, he kind of had air quotes dialogue a little bit, but I was like, oh, yeah, he doesn't need, like, he wants to kill that fucking lizard now, but he knows he can out here. Mm -hmm. It's like, all right, like, he's going to just chill and take the L on this one and get back to him later. Um... Yeah, man, it was it was fun. Oh, and that scene when when Kong comes back and all the fires around him and his eyes are all red, and I was like, you could have like, I would have been, I would have bet a hundred dollars that somebody was mind controlling him because he looks so fucking evil right there. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah, man. Every everything about it was dope. Uh, the fight scenes were cool, and I like how. So they they lay out this narrative that Kong doesn't want to fight. Like he just wants to be home. He wants to be at home. You know what I mean? He thought it was Cole Island, but they even talk about he's so much bigger now. Like, this island's too small for him. Mm -hmm. So you're like, well, fuck. I mean, what, what's he going to do for a home? And then they had that fucking other place for him. And it was like, yeah, he doesn't want to fight. And he hasn't had to fight anything like a Godzilla. So he kind of got his ass whooped a little bit. 
mm-hmm. also hung in there. You know what I mean? It was like as they were going, he started like okay, like like hanging with them a little bit better. And yeah. it seemed like he was learning him a little bit more, and he was like not making the same mistakes twice, which is way more thought put into these action sequences than I than I thought any, anybody was gonna do, which was really refreshing. Um, yeah, man, and I and I like the way how like there's obviously a few scenes where Godzilla and Kong were communicating with each other <clears throat> aggressively. <laughs> But I also like the point that, like, they're not friends. No. You know what I mean? It's not like they high-fived each other after they beat up the robot. You know what I mean? Like, I was really worried that was going to be, like, and they are just going to go and habitate, like, some weird land or something and be buddies. But it was, like, it was, like, after they took off the robot and <laughs> fucking Kong just tossed his axe down and took a nap, he was like, fuck, dude. You're like, yeah, I bet you're tired of shit. That seemed like a big pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. And then he sees Godzilla come back up. And you can see in his face, again, the facial expressions. It, it reminded me of um, of uh, Danny Glover in the end of Predator 2. Yeah. After he, he finally smoked that first Predator and then, like, five more pop up. And he knows he's going to die, but he just says, who's next? I was yeah. like, that was Kong's line right there. He was like, all right, fucker, let's go. And he grabs the axe, and he's like, all right, I guess we have to do this. And Kong, or fucking Godzilla yelled something, and Kong threw the axe down. And they're like, mm, all right. It's and he like just the like, from the water. Yeah. Yeah. I like that, man. It was, it was. I thought it was well done. And then, like I said, like, just fucking Kong versus Godzilla is cool as shit, man. Let them fight. It's awesome. Honestly, Kong was one of the best actors of this movie. I'd be interested to see if they did some sort of uh, facial motion capture. They did. They did? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And this one, I think it's... I think it's the same guy. Well, because in uh, Kong Skull Island, it was done by uh, Toby Cabell, Doctor Doom from the Fantastic Four movies, if you don't know who that is. Okay. Or uh, Johnny Quid from uh, Rock and Roller. Um but I think um, I'm trying to see if on here if it tells me because I can't remember the other guy's name that was um, doing it doing the, the motion capture stuff I don't see it on here but Mike was absolutely right like after we finished the movie and we're driving home that's one of the things I commented to, to Cody about of just like that scene in particular where he you you can just see in his face he's just like fuck I, I i'm done but okay i'm gonna do this you know he just yeah. this like god fucking okay here we go uh expression on his face and uh even throughout the rest of the the movie anytime he's interacting with the the kid you know he could be in like this rage and then just suddenly there's the kid and he's like he's all of a sudden like oh little tiny thing is nice you know i trust little tiny thing uh speaking of her very well done as uh, as an actress, the little kid. I don't know her yeah. name. Very well done. Uh, it makes me mad knowing that she's deaf and uh, mute, uh, apparently as well, uh, that she communicates with Kong through sign language, but every review uh, or, like, a trailer always says, like, she has a special connection to him, and it's like, dude, just pay attention. She's not to the movie. telepathic. She's she taught him sign language. Like, can we just say that? They just but make I think it sound like there's like there was obviously some type of like yeah, there's some type of emotional know, like, connection there, yeah. but they make it sound like she has like some sort of superpower that she can, you know, that she can communicate with him telepathically or something. When you know she taught him sign language like he's a giant freaking ape and she taught him sign language and he speaks it really well and he he's very intelligent and he didn't want anybody else to know it just like was a whole other dynamic to his character just by knowing that which is cool too because it's like in this version of Kong we don't get the classic you know grab the pretty girl and go up the Empire State Building kind of thing but Kong obviously there was in the original Kong movies and stories, he's there's some type of, you know, 
emotional attachment to that person, obviously. Mm -hmm. And although it's not the exact same thing, there's still some type of, there's a person that for whatever reason he cares about and he trusts and obviously has good intuition about this person being one of the good people that I could trust kind of thing. So it was nice. And there's like little, little things where it was like, they, they would just make like eye contact sometimes and those signings, <laughs> they were just kind of like, Hey, fucking chill. And he's like, all right. And yeah, I like right. the fact that they, they made the, um, the heartbeat thing a couple mm-hmm. times. I was like, Oh, is it cause she's deaf and mute, but she's in tuned. Like she's paying attention. She's listening for it. Yeah. And she feel the beat get faster. Like that one scene on the ship in the rain, you can feel the beat faster and faster and faster. And she's like, Oh, he's pissed off. I gotta go talk to him kind of thing. Yeah. So that, that was pretty cool. And I must add, I'm so happy with this movie that they didn't turn Monarch into an evil corporation or an evil something or other, at least yet. I mean, they, they probably could in, in future. Oh, they're but, gonna. But they're fucking assholes at Monarch. It was one thing that I was afraid, a little bit afraid of as well going into this movie, that they would turn Monarch into, well, into uh, whatever, what was that guy's uh, corporation? Apex uh, Cybernetics. Apex, Apex Cybernetics, which in retrospect, Apex predator makes total sense now that you think about it uh but i was just so happy that they were still just an organization that wanted to do right by these giant monsters you know they 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 obviously care about kong they obviously want him to survive in a location that uh oh yeah that's the other thing is i wish there's some more background story because like the only thing we know about kong is Skull Island, which was circa Vietnam, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously they knew about King Kong in the Godzilla ones because they they hint at it. But it's like, where is... Like, they... Obviously, Monarch set up that that enclosure thing on Skull Island. Yeah. But at some point, they found him. But then later on, you see, like, like that, that lady's face on a magazine cover, and it says Kong whisperer and i'm like oh so everyone knows about king kong like everyone knows about king kong like or <laughs> like they must have at this point yeah yeah i was like we've never has he been off of school like why do we know about i was like that's i i want just give me like a little trade paperback of like why we know why everyone knows about king kong <clears throat> go go to hand <laughs> oh, uh... yeah that's your hand god we're fucked <laughs> We're going to fucking die. I hope so. Um, So, I don't know if this is going to or not, but there is a a Skull Island animated cartoon coming to Netflix that is based in this universe. Okay. So, we may get some story on this. So, basically, it's about a ship that wrecks, and it's them trying to survive and get off the island. Uh, And it takes place after... Uh, Kong Skull Island and now so we may get some of that uh, because obviously um, with King of Monsters we find out that Monarch has these facilities all over the world wherever Titans are um, and they mention Skull Island uh, in it they even show it on the on the big map uh, you know saying hey it's it's secure but it um, still seemed like a secret kind of thing uh, yeah. In a way, the the one thing that I noticed, the, like I know that they, because in the movie they talk about it, is that storm that's developed around Skull Island has made it uninhabitable for Kong, but also probably makes it super hard for anybody to get around. So I don't think Kong yeah. ever got off the island. I think he was exposed as being a titan when Monarch kind of went public after King of Monsters or during King of Monsters, because obviously they're having the trial about you know, hey, like Monarch needs to fucking become you know part of a, a military branch and we're going to oversee it because we need to figure this out blah 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 so there's a lot of the world knows about it and obviously apex and the world at, at large knows about Kong or about uh godzilla and other titans because they have those titan res- refugee um bunkers so there's a lot more about it so there's probably public knowledge and obviously you saw the magazine that had her on it blah 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 and that's probably more of a it's a publicly available magazine. It's probably more of an industry magazine. 
know what I mean? Like a not it wasn't like on the it, cover of a like, like, zoological magazine or something. Yeah, like exactly. That. Yeah, like journals and stuff. Because I'd imagine that you have this giant ape you to study, like study him, and you're gonna just be, you know, just making all kinds of journal articles and stuff like that. <clears throat> about it. Yeah. Because he's the most tame of the monsters to study too. You can't. I mean, you can study the remains of the rest of them, but you, you're not really going to study Godzilla. Yeah, that's the other thing too. Did he's you the only one that you can really study? Did you notice how they did the beginning of the movie where they said all the all those other monsters were all the titans were deceased? Yeah, it was like a like a bracket. It was yeah, pretty awesome. Where it's like deceased, 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 then ding, 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 bite. Yeah, I was like, oh, okay. So from the time we were in. Uh, obviously, at the end of King of Monsters, he's standing on the top of that little hill, and the corpse of of uh, um, Ghidorah is there. But real, obviously, like they're all there, and they kind of taken like kneel to him, or whatever. So apparently, like he must have just gone like, "All right, well, I'm gonna close my eyes. I'm gonna count to ten. Y'all can scatter, but I'm coming for you. Find you. I'm gonna find yeah. you because it it just started showing off all the ones that were deceased, and I'm like. Because one of them was Rodan, and at the end of King of Monsters, Rodan's, yeah, he's got a hole punched in him, but he's still alive. Or it's mm-hmm. still alive. I don't want to assume it's uh, gender. Yeah. Um, Rodan sounds male, but who knows nowadays. Uh, but yeah, he because he's there too, and he, he bows down to the King of Monsters. Um, and so it's interesting to see, like, all those deceased, 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 you know, sort of things. I was like... Oh, okay. So that's how we get around not having these monsters in here. And again, we don't even know how many years have passed between. Not that I saw them say a number, but from uh, King, King monsters of Monsters too. to now, because in it our been much, because everyone looks roughly the same. Yeah, so it's not. It's not yeah. like they could say twenty. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's a couple at most. Actually, yeah. do we even know? Because um, wasn't. Uh, King of Monsters technically it was moved up into the future future by a couple of years I have no idea I think they said that in there too I don't know uh, by the way the actor who or oh, performer for King Kong his name is Terry Notary Notary uh, he's a well known um, motion capture and stunt coordinator or stunt uh, performer he's been in, he did um, motion capture for Avatar Adventures of Tintin, uh, the Hobbit movies, the Planet of the Apes reboots. He was actually um, the stunt double for a couple different people, and he was uh, one of the apes too, I believe it said on there. And then he did um, he worked on Avengers: Infinity War and Avengers: Endgame as different characters. But he was uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He also as a character, as an actor, played Call Obsidian, which is one of uh, uh, Thanos' main henchmen. So that's pretty cool. But he has a really long career, um, dating all the way back. When I say this, it's going to sound weird because it's only 2000, um, which is uh, <laughs> Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Uh, yeah. But uh, he w- he worked on literally like in 2001, he worked on three movies. 2007, he worked on four movies. Uh, 2011 he worked on four movies I mean he does a lot of different things and he's like he's stunt coordinator and performer in like almost every one of these wow um, he also did uh, oh that's what it was the character he played was Rocket in uh, the um, uh, Planet of the Apes movies one of the monkeys I couldn't remember his name or one of the apes I guess really what it is uh, but he did the motion capture for the body of King Kong and the movements. And then Toby, Cab- uh, Toby Cabell did a lot of the facial stuff that you saw in, uh, uh, Skull- Kong Skull Island, but he's credited, uh, as full on everything in, uh, Godzilla versus Kong. Mm. So, cool. and he's the mocap, uh, performer for Groot. Uh, if you're wondering yeah. who he was in the, nice. the mocap stuff in those ones, including he's listed here as being in Thor, Love and Thunder. So apparently Groot's in that. Which I guess kind of makes sense. <laughs> yeah. it, you know, it ended. Anyway. Uh, speaking of the way it ended, uh, there were no teasers yep. at the end of this, teasing anything in the future. And there really hasn't been a whole lot of talk, at least that I've read, about uh, 
new movies. So uh, the director, Adam Wingard, apparently uh, talked about this on some interview he did like months ago, but was under it, it was under a, an embargo on, on releasing it until the movie was out. Um, he said that the studio, the writers, and himself all agreed that they don't know the future of the franchise, so they left any teases out just in case it never goes anywhere. So they're not letting fans down, as what he said. Okay. Because they could tease stuff. Obviously, they in a way they did because Kong obviously is in the Hollow Earth, the center of the Earth, and there's people there with him. So there's free access in and out. Obviously, they've found a way with the heaves. Uh, Godzilla is now the soul air quote soul titan uh on the surface uh clearly he's not going anywhere because motherfucker takes a licking and keeps on ticking if you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um and uh obviously there's some kind of like we assume a rivalry between the two between the lizards and the monkeys but we're not too positive because it almost looks like they kind of work together but also not because like it looks like when he set the axe down it lit up the thing they were all made of scales from from a version of Godzilla, be it Godzilla or whoever. Um, but you know, there's, there's little things like that. But they don't they didn't want to tease anything, like they didn't want to show another version of Mecha Godzilla or Mecha Ghidorah uh, being like, activated or whatever. Um, but yeah, that's that's the reason. That's what I I read last night because I was really interested in why they decided not to do that. Okay, and it makes sense, especially when you're. <clears throat> Movies got pushed back so so much. I mean, obviously, you're not thinking of it like that then, but uh, I actually don't even know when they finished the movie. If they finished it during the pandemic, it's like, you know, yeah, you don't know what the future of anything is, so why tease something like that? But it's I and mean, it's it's in a part where it's like, if that's the end, it's the end but it, because they it had a... the other titans are dead. But you also there's this weird fucking, you know entryway from other places it seems like it doesn't you know what i mean like anything because even even the last one they talked about um uh Ghidorah coming from from space right so it's like well something else could come from space <laughs> you know what i mean so it's not and there's still some monsters left in the catalog too and if they want to get froggy they can make a new one like it's, right they that, have already yeah, yeah they that, need... that's not against the rules so and they still haven't really explained like Kong's uh, the statue of, of uh, the giant ape like somebody had to have carved that whether it was a long lost relative of King Kong or some other uh, alien race because you can't tell me that those pillars were just natural formations or yeah. anything like that and then they even hinted at it in the previous uh, in uh, King of Ball Monsters where Godzilla retreats to that giant underground fucking temple you know, yeah. who built that? Why was it built type thing? Clearly built for a giant lizard because he fit in it without wrecking the building. And the, you saw when the the submarine stopped that giant fucking door. And then yeah. Ken Watanabe's fucking little personal sub went in with like a little itty bitty thing went in. You're like, oh, clearly that door is not made by or for yeah. human beings of any sort. Yeah. And like obviously this, the, the sculptures of Godzilla and it was like again a temple for him to kind of be there and it really wasn't a lost city because it was underwater on a volcano Mm -hmm. you know what I mean like it wasn't like oh it sank and it just happened to be here and he found it no I'm pretty sure this was made for this so who uh, who did this Um, yeah but and that just goes to more of like the will we ever find out probably not even if we did continue these they're not gonna be like well remember that temple yeah. from king of the monsters yeah but there's there's some stuff i wouldn't mind like a book would be cool because like i would want to know how they went from that middle of the earth like the the gorillas to apparently a, a, at least a small group of them ending up on skull island and how the older ones died and why kong lived like who killed the older ones because obviously they were badass at some at something right <laughs> you know what i mean like like, there, there's a lot of things that I'm interested in that, that would be cool to get some answers to, but um, even if we don't, the the way they ended this, I'm I'm cool. It's a it's a 
it's a fucking cool four movie run, man. Like it, that's some really fun, fun we watches on those. Yeah. Especially this one. Cause it was lots of fun. And it yep. was just like the, um, the action scenes were, and I think Joe mentioned, like kind of mentioned earlier, like they were so well done that they didn't, they didn't cut away for such so long. They had like such these long shots unless they were erratic movements. And then obviously they punched each other and like, you know, things like that. But like there's these big wide shots and long shots of like them fighting and pushing each other through buildings. And, you know, the first, first person in the POV stuff was cool too. Cause they yeah. cut away a couple of those scenes. I was like, Oh shit. Give me a whole fight scene like this. This is awesome. Yeah. Like I said to Joe last night when that, fighter jet launched off the 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 aircraft carrier right as kong lands on it and you see kong through the glass of the cockpit roar and the jet takes off right before the 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 bow of the ship comes up and i was like that dude almost got yeeted off that fucking aircraft carrier right and that was terrifying because you know that dude had rear view mirrors and you could see that shit he's like big monkey big monkey big monkey and then obviously giant lizard not the best uh turn of events for that young man um but yeah so many cool dope shots when they're going into the hollow earth and Kong swinging from the infrastructure of the, of the cave. And as he gets closer and closer to the opening, it less and less technology. And then he grabs a hold of the one thing and it breaks. He goes, huh? Well, this it's is going to yeah. yeah. Like he just goes down. Um, and then of course the reentry. Oh, they need to figure that out. Cause that looks real p- painful for him. <laughs> That that was really weird. Uh, watching that entry into the Hollow Earth was very well Pacific Rimish, where they're entering into the rift and you don't know what's going on. They enter in some sort of like black void, and then suddenly they're just uh, electronically squirted out the other side. Gravity, bro. Uh, but then it doesn't happen going the other way because you know Godzilla fucking shoots a laser yeah. beam right into the Earth. For a solid it's a five hole. Just shooting a nuclear laser down into the core of the earth. Yeah, right. <laughs> what a dick. And you're able to just like see Godzilla, like Kong and Godzilla, just looking at each other through this hole, and you're like, Jesus Christ, that like what? And you're all. Hey, whatever. remember how? Uh, remember, remember that um, that city, uh, that Hong Kong. Uh, remember that? Um, remember how it's not there, and it's just a weeping hole in the middle of the fucking former city that reaches down to a fucking the middle of the earth. Um, yeah, that was a good times. Remember that city? By the way, great aim on Godzilla for almost hitting Kong from yeah. that far away. Yeah, too bad he doesn't have a throne anymore. That's true. Because Godzilla that really fucking dope. ruined that shit. Thanks a lot, you big he lizard. He still looked really happy, you know, swinging around for his morning walk. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. I like the fact that they, kept, they, they, they were saying he's still growing. Yeah, right? Like, this is in his final form. I was like, oh, shit. And then you see, like, the bigger skulls when he's down in there in the Hollow Earth, and I was like, oh, he does have some more growing to do. The the hand, the carved hand. Oh, that was dope. I was all like, I need a story about that. I need to know why that's there. No, Mike. Is that an actual size of something? How about you write it? How about you write that story? I'm not smart enough to write a story. That's fair. Then don't, boom! I I like that. Yeah, fine. Yeah, fine. Fine, he says. Um. Anywho, yeah. So that's uh. We didn't really do our normal thing. We just all kind of just gabbed about it, but. Um. Three thumbs up for me. Yep. Really good. Yeah. I'll give it a solid two because I don't have other thumbs. Yeah, I don't have other thumbs either. Two. Thumbs up. Are you talking about your dick? Yes. That's your dick Gross. Gross. He says. Gross. <laughs> 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 um. Yeah. So that's cool. What's What's next? What What are we excited for next? What's the next big thing? Is like Mortal Kombat, right? Mortal like Kombat's that's... the next one. Yeah. I feel like we're almost getting back to normal with, uh, like. Uh, media releasing stuff 
I like the uh, HBO Max is as like kind of spread them out, you know. Yeah. So yeah. every couple of weeks, it feels like we're kind of at that stretch now, where every couple of weeks something that I'm at least interested in has a release date, and I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot what it was like to like anticipate something <laughs> to see. Right. It's so weird. That was another thing we talked about afterwards is how uh, how many times we've seen a Quiet Place two trailers. They probably didn't play it, you know, at your house, but we got another. We got the same Quiet Place two trailers. We've did had. you get the Did you get the new Suicide Squad trailer? Yeah, the theatrical yeah. one. That was yeah. good. That was yeah, they cool. released it on Twitter, and they're like, "We dropped this one in secret last night in theaters." I was like, "Oh, you fuckers! Those fuckers probably saw it on the big screen." We did yeah. on the very big screen. It was awesome. Angers. I'm getting. I, I am excited about that movie. Uh, they also showed Fast and the Furious. That was awful. The John Cena weekend, huh? Jesus Christ. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah. Huh. Here's something weird. Um, so I want to look up the release date of A Quiet Place Part 2. I didn't know this, and I don't know if it's... I mean, it says here. So it says uh, it's scheduled to be released in theaters uh, on May 28th, 2021. Uh, the start of the Memorial Day holiday weekend in the USA. It will also be available to stream on Paramount Plus 45 days after its theatrical debut. Good. So come July, you'll be able to watch it at home. Do you have Paramount Plus? I do. Yes. How, how is it? Um, I can watch The Office on it. Um... No, it's Peacock. What's on Paramount Plus? Oh, Paramount Plus because that's CBS. That has like SpongeBob. It has The Stand. Um, it has Comedy Central stuff. Yeah, Comedy Central stuff, which is pretty cool. How uh, much is it a month? Seven ninety nine was it? Seven ninety nine. Yeah, I think so. Sounds about right. Something like that. Um, but yeah, it was it was CBS All Access. Now it's Paramount Plus because it includes. All the other stuff that is owned by well, all the Ninja them. Turtles stuff is on there, right? Uh, yeah, much of it, yeah, because they have Nickelodeon on there too. Yeah, Nickelodeon. Um, Jen saw something, an advertisement for something. I can't remember what it was. She's like, "I want to watch that." I was all like, hey, "You better fucking get Paramount Plus." Was it Teen Mom Two? <laughs> Oh no, it wasn't. It was an MTV thing. It was uh, the Challenge All Stars. Oh yeah, that uh, is about the Challenge All Stars. <laughs> the, the Challenge All Stars. The Challenge. The Challenge. All Stars. Oh, gotcha. And she's a big fan of the Challenge, so you bring back the All Stars. She's like, look at all these old fuckers. <laughs> I was like, Jesus. Uh, she's the... all like, she saw the preview. And she's like, this bitch is like forty now and out of shape. What is she gonna do? <laughs> Uh, the first episode's uh, up, so it must have just come out. I'm looking at it now. Uh, it does have a lot of the MTV stuff, unfortunately. Um, not the good MTV stuff. No, I don't think so. Not that I Damn. see. Judge. Celebrity um, Deathmatch? That's a great question. Let's see. That's cool. He used to watch the oh, shit yeah. out of it. Beavis and Butthead is on here. Uh, has three seasons of Beavis and Butthead. Oh. Uh, was there seasons of Beavis and Butthead? They had that weird, like, half a season that came back a few years ago. Like, mm-hmm. eight years ago. And Celebrity Deathmatch is on here, too. Damn. Oh. Only only seasons five and six, though. Damn. Weird. Yeah, I don't know why it's just those two, but whatever. Good like, movie selection, though. Uh, it does have quite a few things on there. Uh, I mean, it's got a lot of the Nickelodeon stuff. Uh, I see Raiders of the Lost Ark is on there. Uh, Last Crusade, Temple of Doom, Small Soldiers. Oh, Tommy Lee Jones' finest work. Uh, looks like a couple of Mission Impossible movies are on there. Let's see. No, it's got a bunch of solid stuff on there. You uh, guys remember that movie? Crocodile yeah. Dundee 2. Gross. Oh, Dragon Slayer's on here, Mike. You love that movie. I hate that movie. What? You love that movie. 
I'm pretty sure I heard someone say you hit, you love that movie. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Yeah, you heard Cody say that, and he was wrong. yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> he's never Cody's wrong. wrong most of the time, dude. What? I don't know about that. Yeah, that's not well, what I heard. Wait till he starts saying you like some dumb shit. <laughs> Very subjective. Oh, gross. Yeah. I like that movie. I got, I got one for you, Joe. Too. I, like I got another one I like for you. Movie. I guarantee you like this movie. The Shadow, The Saint. Oh, I like that movie too. It's a good, solid Val Kilmer movie. The Saint. The Shadow quick, is not on here. Let's end this on your top three, roughly your top three favorite Val Kilmer movies. Uh, Willow, The Saint, and I don't know. Mike can guess mine. I guarantee it. I don't want to. I want to hear yours straight from the Cody's mouth. Let's uh, hear one of your guys' is. Maybe they'll jog another Val Kilmer movie memory. Real genius. I mean, it's fantastic. Um, definitely not anything with Batman. Uh, yep. Probably either Salt and Sea and uh, probably Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. Ooh, I forgot he was in that movie. Mike, what do you got? What's yours? Uh, Real Genius. Yeah. And I also lump that in with uh, Real McCoy because they both start with the words real. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that's that's they're uh, together. Nope, they're because not. Because I also like that movie, but not as much. And then um, uh, Tombstone. Yep. Tombstone's yep. That is a, that's an iffy one like because that's more of a Kurt Russell movie. Right. But Val Kilmer is like a scene stealer in it, so I'm, uh, I'm going to give it to him. Uh, and Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is of course great, but there's um, there's some like low key ones that he did, and not a lot of people seem to talk about. Like the Saint, no one really talks about the Saint, but it's good. Um, no one talks about him being in the um, uh, the heist movie with De Niro and uh, Pacino. Heat. Uh, Heat. No one talks about that being a Val Kilmer movie, but Val Kilmer is fucking great in that. Yes, he is. Val Kilmer had a, an amazing run, like a run that's like up there with like the all time runs, dude. Like, like, and it's crazy that he got like, I, I don't know if he just got bored with it and then like he got like all fat and then they made fun of him for getting all fat and then he got cancer and everyone stopped making fun of him because he had cancer and now he just hangs out. But, uh, Man, I would really I, – I don't know if his voice is ever going to come back to the point of, like, being able to do movie movies again. Probably not. But, god damn it, it would be cool to see him in some new shit. <laughs> like, right around what he can do and, like, put him in some stuff, man, because he was so fucking good when he had stuff to, like, actually sink his teeth into. But he's one of those guys that got caught in those that shitty fucking era of straight-to-DVD movies that a lot of, like – air quotes former stars you know that regulated to do yeah and it, it that just talk thinking about that just pisses me off how like there's this weird faction of people got put in like movie jail because they had like two three movies in a row not do good so all of a sudden you can't be in studio movies fucking retarded yeah but, yeah i'll take tombstone as my third one it's a good yeah. and yeah, it is. I'm going to go watch a Val Kilmer movie now. Which one? He was really good as Blunt Man. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Kevin Smith needs to just put him, keep putting him in his movies. Right? Might as well, you know what I mean? Do it. Do it. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think that's it for this week's episode. What do you think? Okay. Anything else? Anybody got anything? You got it. I did hear that they canceled uh, The Trench and also New Gods. Yeah. That, uh, that we can sucks. talk about that some other time. You will get to that. <laughs> that was it. They canceled it. They were just like, we're not. We're not. So, yeah, that does suck. Um, yeah, so that's it for uh, this year episode. Um, and uh, I guess we'll uh, talk to y'all next week. Comes at you, we are. Go. Mike. I am Cody, and as usual, you fuckers just came naturally. Bye.